Hello my hungry friends! Today we're making vegetarian cabbage rolls. Gołąbki vegetariańskie. Welcome to Polish Kitchen friends! This is Anna and today I'm teaching you how to make a delicious vegetarian dish of Polish descent of gołąbki, which are cabbage rolls. Traditionally, they're made with uh, ground pork or pork and beef mixture and rice. And there's, it's, the filling is stuffed or it's rolled into cabbage leaves. So we're gonna make a vegetarian version of that today. I get asked about vegetarian cabbage rolls uh, quite a bit, so today's the day. So we're gonna stuff our cabbage rolls with uh, buckwheat and mushrooms. And I, I like this version co because um, mushrooms and buckwheat kind of have this earthy flavor, kind of almost smoky. And I like that instead of the meat. So, and then we're gonna make sauce to go on top of it. Now we're gonna make tomato sauce because I like the sweetness and kind of sourness to cut the richness of the mushrooms and buckwheat. Uh, but you could also kind of switch it up a little bit and instead of putting mushrooms in the buckwheat, you could do um, sauteed onions and skip the mushrooms in the buckwheat and make mushroom sauce. So then you, you could get all the recipes. My mouth's watering already <laughs> for everything I'm talking about today at posturekitchen.com and just search around, there's a bunch of recipes there. And behind the camera is my lovely husband, and he always has questions. Uh, my question is, what kind of cabbages can you use for this? Okay, so in the recipe, if you go to and search for my vegetarian cabbage rolls, I'm using Savoy cabbage, but I the young cab or cabbage is in season now, so you see a lot of young cabbage in the market right now. So I bought young cabbage, but you can use any type you want, Savoy or just regular green cabbage, and I got two because they're kind of little. So I want to make sure I have enough large leaves to stuff them. So we're going to start by slicing about 10 ounces of uh, just button mushrooms or portobellas. Those are actually baby bellas. Uh, I've sliced those and I have about a cup and a half of diced onion. And they've sauteed in here and now they, they've cooled a little bit. But you want to sprinkle a little salt on them and just I'll saute them together here in a couple tablespoons of butter until they cook down and they are nice and smoky looking. <laughs> I don't know if they're looking smoky, but they're nice and cooked. And I have cooked my buckwheat as well, and it's been cooked and cooled. Uh, it's nice and granular. It actually reminds me of ground pork or ground meat cooked. So. We're gonna use that and to it, I'm gonna add my mushrooms to buckwheat. What's your question? Is, is, the, is the buckwheat supposed to be cooled before you add the mushrooms or um, does it not matter? You don't have to cool it. It's just enough to handle. I just happened to have cooked it a little bit, a little while ago, so. So you just don't want it like lava because you're gonna probably be rolling it. In right. Way. Yeah, you definitely don't want lava. And I have, in the recipe you'll see I have thyme, you can use any herb you like. I like thyme or parsley. Um, I just happen to have parsley at home, so that's what I'm gonna add to it. And uh, as I say all the time, cooking is, the recipes are not f there to follow. <laughs> that sounds bad. <laughs> Especially for some of yeah. recipes. So recipes are just guidelines is what I'm getting at. And you can look at it and see if it calls for an herb uh, that you don't have. You can substitute. I wouldn't put mint in it. Although maybe mint would... I know you don't like mint. I like mint. Or uh, rosemary, you know, would probably work as well. If you like those flavors, why not try them? And who knows? Maybe you'll invent something new. And I have, I like mine kind of peppery. So I have two teaspoons of pepper here and a little bit of salt, but I've salted my um, buckwheat before cooking and I've salted the mushrooms as well. So you kind of want to watch the salt and see, you can 
taste this before you put it in the stuffing and see if that's uh, salty enough for you and you can always add more but pepper you can kind of go ahead and go heavy and I have two teaspoons or you can go less as well but I like it with lots of flavor so I have uh, some onion granulated onion or is that that's how it's called right mm -hmm. and granulated garlic and I'll stir that in just a little bit for extra flavor and we're gonna add one egg just to help us bind everyone together and this is gonna cook I'm gonna cook my Gowumpki cabbage rolls on the stove today I'm not gonna bake them and this is a method that I've noticed is not super popular in in the States uh, I see people tend to bake bake them in uh, a pan or baking pan in my in my home on my family table there was two methods uh, done by two different grandmothers and they both they they did it differently one side always boiled them my grandma on my mom's side my baptistasha she uh, always put them in the pot and boiled them in my babcha Vuaja on my dad's side would always bake them and I have a recipe on on the YouTube channel for the traditional style gawampki with ground pork and I did bake them there so you can search through my videos and check that one out this looks good and smells good already yeah yes ma'am I'm gonna give this a taste see if I need to add a little more salt nope this looks good and our filling is done this was pretty easy right not too much work and I hear people say a lot that gawumki are a lot of work but really if you do it once or twice they're really not that bad once you get the technique down and you just keep rolling with it so I have two cabbages and normally to let the to make the leaves softer I also follow the method of my babchastasha and I take <laughs> take a sharp long kind of skinny knife and I just shove it in around the core just to kind of break the large stems off and cut away the core Please, put, put the sharp side away from your thumb thank you <laughs> and this will let the core out and uh, make it a little bit easier for us to separate the leaves when, once we're cooking it and i hear there's a lot of methods people use to soften their leaves i happen to like this one and uh, I hear people put it put their cabbage in the microwave or freeze the cabbage or you know something like that this is the method I like so I kind of follow it I see this cabbage has a little bit of sand here so I'm just gonna rinse the leaves real quick all right our cabbage is all washed and we are ready to soften and kind of steam our leaves so I have a big pot of water and this is just coming up to boil and it's going to do a couple of things so you can throw the whole thing in or I have these two leaves I'm going to just go really slow and careful make sure there's enough room in the pot to uh, submerge your cabbage and still not overflow I'm going to turn this down a little bit and then this we want to do a couple things with uh, by doing this process so we want to soften the leaves a little bit so they we were able to cut the core out and the other thing is i don't know what i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> but mainly uh we're softening the leaves a little bit we have a second bowl here to uh, to grab my leaves that are uh, soft already and just kind of slowly turn your cabbage around the core is where the stems are the hardest obviously so 
If you can keep your cabbage down by the core, that would be perfect. And just kind of give it a couple of minutes and we can pull the leaves by one by one once we kind of can tell that they're pliable enough to fold without breaking. I'm just grabbing them by the stems here to kind of peel them away to get to the ones that are around the core and just take as many as you can off and that's why I got a couple of cabbages because these young guys are kind of uh, the what do you call this they're kind of curly like this and sometimes it's hard to get them off without breaking them all and then whatever remains whatever cabbage we're left with we can definitely use for for something for soup or kapusta zasmarzana i have a recipe for that i'm gonna make that with my remaining cabbage today would you if you had a choice between your you have two cabbages mm -hmm. savoy and young which one are you reaching for so it depending, it de kind of depends on the flavor. Savoy is a little bit more bitter. So you can, and this young cabbage is a lot sweeter. Yeah, so I prefer the young cabbage by flavor, but I like the look of Savoy cabbage. Oh, I mean, it tastes good as well. I'm getting a steam uh, cabbage facial. <laughs> <laughs> But these are actually coming off pretty nicely, so I'm pretty happy with that. Get yourself good tongs and be super careful. So I'm getting to these smaller leaves in the middle and they're a lot more curly. They're still coming off nicely, but it's <clears throat> if you're kind of getting to a point where they're not coming off, you can leave this core for, uh, we'll use it for uh, the bottom of the pot and for, we can also cover the cabbage with, with these leaves so they don't float to the top when we're uh, when we're boiling them. So I'm going to steam the rest of my leaves and then we'll get to stuffing. Our cabbage rolls are nice and soft now. They've cooled a little bit. And what we're going to have to do is cut off this, uh, the thickest part of the stem. So I normally go kind of from the back side here and towards the back. Um, this knife may be a little bit too big. Well, just be really gentle. Don't cut yourself and then just cut away that so we can fold it easier. Once we've done that, so as I said, I'm gonna be using my pot to do my cabbage rolls today. So the part of the cabbage, the little guys, or the ones that are holy, not in the spiritual way, will go, this is a little bit hot, will go on the bottom, and this will protect our gawampki from getting burnt from being cooked in here and we can eat those at the end as well so we have our um, our bottom layer and now we can make our rolls so to make these it's really simple and i get this question sometimes do we do you want to make these all even size so like do you always just want to use the outer leaves and i say no to that because uh sometimes I want to have a small roll. Sometimes I want to have a bigger one. Uh, my lovely husband behind the camera will eat, you know, maybe two of the large ones, but my daughter will eat maybe two of the smaller ones. And I, so I kind of like to have the variety available. 
So to make these, we take a little bit of our, our, our filling or stuffing, and you can put as much as you think you can uh, fit or as much as you want in one. I'll add a little bit more to this one. And then we roll from the bottom up and we bring the sides in. And this helps if this cabbage is soft now. And this is good enough. I'm gonna take this and put in our pot. And I'm gonna just set it down and make sure it's kind of, this won't unroll while, while cooking. I actually prefer um, boiling my, uh, my gawompki in the pot uh, without the sauce. So I, I will put some, preferably either chicken stock or vegetable stock over, over these once they're done and then make the sauce on the side because everybody loves sauce and there's never enough if you just pour it into the pot and then just serve from it. So I make, I make my gawampki separately. I boil them uh, in the pot most of the time and I will make double batch of the sauce because everybody loves, loves sauce. So I'm gonna go through these, I'm gonna fill my pot and then we'll come back and set them to boil. And then we're gonna take some of the remaining leaves that you have left. I ended up actually using most of my second cabbage as well to fill or to use up all of my filling. And then I have a few leaves left and maybe half a, cab uh, half a head of cabbage. And I'll use that to make my kapusta zasmarana, my fried cabbage or braised cabbage, or you can do cabbage soup or whatever. Uh, and then I have some either chicken stock or vegetable stock if you want to continue with the veggie uh, theme. And we are gonna pour this over, I'm gonna pour this over our cabbage leaves, or cabbage rolls rather, because this is the liquid they're gonna cook in. And then we're gonna take our leaves and put it on top just to keep them down. Maybe I'll do one more. One of my holy guys. And this is nice and hot. And we are gonna, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna put this on my stove, not, a, not in my oven. Uh, and I'm gonna cook this. So pretty much this, the filling is cooked. The raw egg will cook in no time. Uh, so we just need to soften the cabbage a little bit more. So I'm gonna give this about 30 minutes on the stove and the leaves that are on top will also let us kind of know how soft the cabbage is on the inside. So I say about 30, 40 minutes tops, this will sit on the stove and, um, and then we'll have some sauce with it. We'll make the sauce in, in the meantime and then we'll do the tasting. Our cabbage rolls are nicely bubbling in the background. If you turn, 
your heat to high at first and bring it up to boil and then turn it to low and then get to your sauce. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna double my sauce because everybody loves sauce and there's never enough. So I've blended two cans of to stewed tomatoes or you can do diced or whole tomatoes, whatever your preference is. I just put in a blender and blended it, that's it. And then I'm gonna put it in my pot and to it, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna turn this on, start boiling. And to it, I'm gonna add six tablespoons of uh, tomato paste because I'm doubling my recipe. And that's gonna give us nice tomato flavor and be super kind of tangy with from the tomatoes. And I have our Polish trio that I call uh, bay leaves and some peppercorns and allspice berries. And that go in and we always make fun of this or my husband always makes fun of me when he, while eating, fishes one out. And I tell him that he wins. <laughs> I win a lot. Yeah. And then I have uh, three cups of vegetable stock or you can do chicken if you are not watching your meat intake, I guess. And that's our sauce. This will kind of, once you bring it up to boil, uh, we're gonna simmer this for about 15, 20 minutes, just on low. Uh, I think I need to add salt yet. I don't think I've added salt. So I'm gonna start with a teaspoon and adjust later if I need to. Give this a stir, bring it up to boil cover it and simmer on low for and simmer until our galonki are ready. Then we'll see you then. Our cabbage rolls are ready. Who's ready to eat? They, I can smell that they're made from buckwheat and these guys have kept them down while they were cooking. And I can fish one out now. They're super lava hot. And this is how I would serve them. So you put them on the plate. And this is why I like to cook sauce separately. So now we have all that beautiful juice in there, but no way to get to it. So if you cook your sauce separately, what you can do then, once you put your beautiful gawombek, one gawombek on the plate, you pour however much sauce you want, and I like lots. And Bob's your uncle. Now we gotta eat. Yay! This is lava. But they're nicely cooked. I can tell that the cabbage is nice and soft. And they look gorgeous. If you like your sauce a little bit thicker, you can continue cooking uncovered for a little while until it gets to your desired thickness. And I can't wait to try this. Garnish this with a few uh, sprigs of parsley or not. <laughs> mm. Perfect. The buckwheat is nice and soft. I can taste the mushrooms in there and the sauce cuts it in your mouth. I can tell you what some. I do. Very much. It's perfect. I hope you make this at home. I hope you come visit us again and cook with us and let us know how your Polish cooking is going at home and continue to go out of our kitchen, uh, watch our Kitchens Closed episodes. Everything has opened up recently in Poland, so we're gonna explore a little bit more. Go to polishkitchen.com and check out all the recipes. We're also on Instagram and Facebook obviously on YouTube. So go ahead and check us out, like us, follow and subscribe, let our channel grow, spread the word of Polish Kitchen all over the place and help us be happy. <laughs> 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 we'll see you next time. Smash Nego.